Is the church dying or is it in revival? In my grandmother's generation, they had 63% church attendance and the main problems that they had in school were chewing gum and talking in class. I don't have to tell you, those are not the problems we face in schools today. It only takes three generations to forget a thing. So I ask you, is the church dying or is it in revival? I told you in my last video that if we have a large population not reading their Bible, we would have serious consequences. And that only 1% of Christians, mind you, were daily Bible readers. I would say that's a large portion of the population that isn't Bible readers. I will tell you this now. If we are not careful to not only read our Bibles, but also to share what we have read in those Bibles, what we're going to face in the coming days is not pretty. It only takes three generations to forget. And in my grandmother's generation, I told you the biggest problems they faced in school were chewing gum and talking in class. Now, in my last video, I showed you in her Bible that she passed down to me, had every if and every when underlined. In her generation, they held such a strong Christian tradition. It gave them a strong moral compass. My generation holds feebly on to that. And I fear my children's generation doesn't grasp it at all. Now, the very reason that we have the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, is because of such a strong oral tradition that they held. And meanwhile, in America, people are shocked when someone reads the entire Bible, much less reading it all the way through more than once. Self-consciousness has often led us to not sharing the gospel. We've been concerned that we'll maybe say something wrong. And future generations have, as a result, been left out in the cold. Some have never heard the phrase, and the words, God loves you. Can you imagine never hearing that? Maybe you're one of those people that has never heard those words. I'm here to tell you today, God loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you're going to, his love is unconditional. God loves you. You are called to shift atmospheres. When you were born, you were placed here on this earth with an assignment. You are here for a reason. When someone is born again, why don't they just go straight up to heaven? Well, I'll tell you one reason. Who could they tell about Jesus if they're already in heaven? When you were born, you were born with a distinct sound that, was with, that is within you. Life has a sound and it's marked with experiences. If there's no sound when a baby is born, it's not a good sign. Everybody gathers around that baby eager to hear something. They want to hear that when that baby opens its mouth, they have a sound that indicates that it's not only alive, but that it's doing well. When you enter this world, you bring with you a unique sound that nobody else has. The set excuse me, the sound that God placed on the inside of you, it becomes marked with every experience you have ever had. There is a sound assignment here on this earth. There is a purpose to that sound. Are you aware that scientists have found that even flowers make a sound? They've even discovered that this sound differs and varies based on whether or not they are carrying pollen. Now, by doing so, the bees are alerted as to whether or not they should visit those flowers. So let me ask you this. What if those flowers suddenly decided to not make that sound because it's not in their personality? I mean, after all, it doesn't take all that. Well, if flowers were to suddenly decide that it was not in their personalities to make a sound, the bees couldn't find them and everything we eat would change. 
The sound that you possess serves a specific purpose. You have it for a reason. Now, as humans, you have free will. God gave us that. As a result, you have the ability to choose whether or not to surrender to and use the sound that God has bestowed on each and every one of you. You have been given the option to leave the earth void of the unique sound that can only be produced by you. That's your option. He gives us free will. But keep this in mind. God does not make mistakes. You were born at this precise point and time in history for a reason. Do you realize your capability as a child of God? God tells us that we can partner with him. That creative power that spoke earth, you and I, into existence. He tells us that we can partner with him. Let's join him. Let's partner with him in proclaiming that his will be done on the earth. Let's say the church will not die on our watch. Let's access the heart of God by reading our Bibles and then opening our mouths to decree and declare what we've read, what's on his mind. Let's speak it into existence. According to 1 Corinthians 2, if you're concerned about this at all, God tells you in 1 Corinthians 2 that he's able to carry on where our human senses are unable to. So that leaves us with no excuse because through the Holy Ghost, we have a connection to the one who speaks and is never silent. Join with him. Open your mouth. Release the sound that he gave to you. Share with others the truth that God loves them. Is the church dying? Join with me in saying, not on my watch. The church has the chance to see another great awakening, the likes of which we've never seen. But it can't do that if we don't share the gospel.